Welcome back to the channel, writers, to another Review Monday. Sorry I haven't been uploading as much recently. I ended up catching a cold, and while the cold went away pretty quickly, which, let me know though, you know, thankfully it wasn't COVID, but I lost my voice during the cold, and in case you can't tell from this channel, I really like to talk. So when I lose my voice, it's always the very last thing to come back. So been a little bit. I didn't really have the, the backup videos that I probably should have in case of illness, but I am back and we are back reviewing. We are going to do another movie today because I felt like it. And we are doing Willy's Wonderland starring Nicolas Cage. So this is a relatively new release. It, we ended up renting it for $20 off iTunes, which I hate. Let me just open, guys, by saying I hate the $20 rental, the, the new thing that's been happening ever since, you know, the quarantine started, the pandemic started, and movies are starting to release, you know, into your home because you obviously can't go to the movies, but they release it at like $20 for a 48-hour rental. Hate it. I get why they're doing it, but I hate it so much. I hate spending $20 on a movie that I'm only going to have for 48 hours. So, this, Willy's Wonderland, this movie was a $20 rental, and it is the first in a long time that I actually did not regret spending that much money on after the movie was over. So, I'm excited to talk about it, because it was actually a bomb movie. So, not it bombed, it was bomb, just to clarify. So, Willy's Wonderland is, I don't know how many of you know about the children's horror game, Five Nights at Freddy's, but it's sort of like the movie version of Five Nights at Freddy's. You know, they did their own storyline with it. Disclaimer, I don't know a whole lot about the game, except that it has the same premise as Willy's Wonderland, which is, there is a children's like play area, not area, but like a play building like Chuck E. Cheese style for those of you who know what that is. And the animatronic animals are possessed and they come to life in Freddy's It's at Night, in Willy's Wonderland It's Just at Will. But they come to life and they basically like murder. That's just, that's what they do. They're just these like fun kids style animatronic animals that murder in their free time. So it rates pretty highly across the board with an exception of IMDb, which gave it a 5.6 out of 10. But everywhere else, it seems to have really enjoyed the movie. Um, Rotten Tomatoes had a 64% on its critic ratings and a 78% on its audience ratings, which I found a little surprising because generally when I look at Rotten Tomatoes, there's typically a divide. You know, either critics really, really liked a movie but the audience didn't really so much, or the audience really, really liked the movie and the critics didn't so much. You know, it's the quality, the kind of like indie quality and the submersiveness that critics are looking for versus, you know, theatrical entertainment the audiences are looking for. Apparently this movie nailed both. So everybody was happy with it. Um, it does have a 4.2 on Google reviews and a 4.5 on Amazon Prime. So like I said, high, high ratings across the board. And I'm no different. I rate Willy's Wonderland a 4 out of 5 stars. I thought the premise was kind of stupid. I read the synopsis and I thought it was kind of stupid. I watched the trailer and I thought it was kind of stupid. But we've watched everything else. So we ended up renting it for one of our dinner nights. And... It was so good, y'all. So here's the thing. It is kind of stupid. Like the synopsis is accurate. The trailer is accurate. You know, what you see is what you get in this movie. But the way they did it was just so perfect for the type of movie. It doesn't take itself too seriously. The movie doesn't. The actors take it so seriously. Like the actors that are in this movie, they are like, they're going for Emmys. They're going for Oscars. Like they are here to bring it. Nick Cage is amazing in it. So he was like the stereotypical, like dangerous loner that happens by this small little town. And he's just so like badass and carefree and just, so mysterious he's just he's mystery embodied but I love it so he just he brings such a seriousness to this role which by the way this role that has 
no lines. I'm not even kidding, y'all. He says not a single word throughout this entire movie. I kept waiting. Like, at first I thought it was just like a funny little poke at the, you know, mysterious stranger. Please excuse the puppy. At the mysterious stranger trope. And I was like, okay, okay, we get it. We get it. He's the mysterious stranger. Like, when's he going to speak? And then they get to the end. And I'm like, wow. Y'all really handed Nicolas Cage a script with zero lines on it. And he went... I got you. The thing that I think makes the movie so great is it's kind of a throwback, not not the style, the cinematic style is, you know, modern and exactly what you would hope for, but the way that all of these characters, or all of these actors, I should say, bring a seriousness to their role in their character, even though the plot is kind of dumb, they bring everything they've got to it and it reminds me a little I compared it when I was talking to my partner to um the Power Rangers back in the 90s all the putty people brought their a-game all the Power Rangers brought their a-game you know Zordon was just here to be the godly voice everybody brought what they could to the table even though it was kind it was a children's show it was a children's show it was kind of dumb they did kind of weird things every now and then but they brought it. And that's exactly what this movie is. All of the actors bring their everything to it. There's so many funny little tropes and stereotypes and just little digs kind of at Hollywood itself and at the characters you typically see in Hollywood. But they all just, they commit to it with 110% and it makes the movie so enjoyable. So the plot of the movie, I'm just going to kind of do a brief overview of the plot because if you guys want to watch it, I highly, highly recommend that you watch it. Um, the cheapskate in me says wait until it's not a $20 rental, but honestly, I wasn't, like I said, I didn't regret paying $20 for the rental. So that's on you. That's on you and your bank account. But the synopsis is Nicolas Cage is this mysterious loner wanderer person who ends up getting a flat tire out in this little podunk city. He doesn't really know where he is, but there were spikes laid across the road and it blew his tires. And the tow truck guy comes and picks him up and he's like, oh yeah, some kids stole the spikes from the police station. You know, they probably think it's super funny to ruin people's days, blah, blah, blah. So he takes the car and he's like, you know, I can fix your car for you, but unfortunately it's going to be a lot of money. And Nicholas's, Nicholas's character is like, okay, cool. Like here's a credit card. And he's like, oh, you see, we don't really have internet here. So like, I can't take a credit card. You have to pay cash. And he's like, okay. Yeah. Without speaking. He doesn't speak. I'm speaking, but he doesn't. So he's like, so he looks over at the ATM. ATM's broken. And he kind of looks at the guy like, what am I supposed to do, buddy? He's like, hmm. You know, there is somebody who could use someone for a little job in the town. And he could pay you the money to cover your tires. Next character is like, oh, I guess, whatever. Well, the job is to clean up this Willy's Wonderland, this like Chuck E. Cheese style kids place, to clean it up because it hasn't been used in years and years and years, but the owner wants to try to reopen it, but it, you know, it's been standing there, so it's covered in dust and spider webs and blah, blah, blah. So Nicholas, Nicholas' character is like, okay, cool. So he goes in to clean it. Well, they end up locking him in, like full on like chains around the door locking. And obviously, you knew, if you saw the trailer, you already knew what was happening. But you're kind of like, if you hadn't seen the trailer, you're like, that seems weird. So he gets locked in this building and eventually finds out. And it happens pretty quickly, honestly. Like he's not in there for like an hour before the first of the animatronics try to kill him. Well, then it turns out that this mysterious loner, Nicolas Cage, is actually a badass, like John Wick style badass. And he just like takes out the first animatronic thing, like tears them into pieces and stuffs them into a garbage bag and continues cleaning. Like throughout the entire movie, he's like destroying these animatronics and then just cleaning up after it. Cause he made a deal. He made a deal to clean the place and then his tires get fixed. So he's committed to cleaning the place. So there is a subplot of a teenage girl. She and her friends also try to break in in order to save Nicolas Cage because they know what's going on in the building. She volunteers to go in on her own. The boy that's got a little crush on her kind of convinces the rest of them to try to like go in after her and they all end up stuck in the building. A couple of them end up dying. I'm not going to lie. A couple of them end up dying. Not going to tell you how many. 
But so they end up with Nicolas Cage and he ends up, you know, killing the ones that are fighting him and trying to save the ones that he can. But they all stupidly decide to split up like Scooby-Doo style. But this is an adult Scooby-Doo, so some of them die. And just that's kind of what the movie is. The movie is he gets attacked by animatronics and he destroys the animatronics. And he gets attacked by another one and he destroys another one. And over here some kids are dying and he's doing his best to try to save them. And at some point, the police chief ends up coming to, like, rescue him. But she's really just there to explain why he's got to die. So there, I'm not going to give the whole backstory because I think that, like, that's, you know, something that you want to watch the movie for. But there is a backstory as to how the animatronic creatures got possessed. So she basically just shows up to tell him, hey, yo, these things are possessed. Uh, they kind of destroy our town when we don't feed them. So we made a deal with them that we just like feed them a bunch of loners that are just happening by our town and they leave our town alone. So like if you could die tonight, that'd be great. Please and thank you. And then she locks it back in the building and you're like, that's cold. That's some cold shiz right there. And at that point, I'm thinking, dude, he's already murdered like three of them. Like just let him murder all of them and let him leave. Like it's not that big of a deal. Uh, yeah, so that's that's the thing. I'm not going to tell you guys exactly how it ends, like I said, or exactly the backstory or anything like that, so that, the, you know, the movie's not completely spoiled for you, because I do think you should watch it. I think it's a great movie. It's just pure entertainment. You don't, don't go in expecting National Treasure or The Da Vinci Code or anything that's, like, super deep and, you know, subversive and intense. It's not that. It is pure entertainment. And if you go in wanting to watch people bring their A-game to a silly, weird, plotted movie. It's so good. It's as long as you keep your expectations right there, it's amazing and so enjoyable. So I hope you guys enjoyed the review. Uh, if you do watch the movie or if you've already watched the movie, feel free to leave a comment below. I'd love to see what other people think about it. I feel like I don't know. I feel like I might have enjoyed it a little too much. Although, like I said, by, based on the reviews, other people liked it just as much as I did. So I would love to hear your guys' thoughts. Also, if you have any movies that you love or that you hate or that you hate to love or love to hate, leave them in the comments below and I will go ahead and watch them. My partner and I like to watch movies at night while we're like eating dinner or making dinner. So we have lots of nights that we could watch those movies and then I could come on here and tell you what I thought about them. We could have a little discussion going on. So if you like this video, please click that like button. And if you want to see more videos like this, hit that subscribe button and maybe even that notification bell. And I will see you guys next time. Later, writers.